Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service of Holy Communion this morning. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Adrian Halkins. I am here uh, doing a placement from Serum College in Salisbury. It was meant to be just for a year, but I'm hoping to stay on for a little bit longer and stay with you. Um, so it is really good to be with you all this morning and good to see you at this service. We have a couple of notices to, to get us started. Um, hopefully, most of you have seen the email that Jonathan sent out yesterday um, regarding the Ukraine crisis. Um, we want to say a big thank you to everyone who has donated uh, financially to the appeal and the, particularly to the, the Good Neighbors hubs that have collected uh, 150 pounds for Ukraine. And this coming Thursday evening, there will be a prayer vigil here at St. Mary's starting at 7 o'clock. So everyone is welcome to come to that, welcome and encouraged to come to that. And also... Today at four o'clock this afternoon, there is the evening prayer with Jeremy here in, in the church. So um, also encourage you to come to that. So I'm sure a lot of you are uh, like, like I've been over the last few weeks, um, both saddened and shocked and frightened by everything that is, is happening in Ukraine and, and Russia, but also hopefully experiencing some moments where there is a a heightened sense of, of God's presence and a realization that, that God is with us um, through all of these circumstances. And that is something we want to, to celebrate uh, this morning as we worship together. As the, the rotor of the readings was being prepared for, for Lent, uh, we decided that we wanted to focus on the Psalms, uh, mostly because it really it fits with this season of, of penitence and preparation in the church's calendar. But with everything that is going on in the world, we realize that the, the Psalms have a perfect fit um, for the, the circumstances in the world at the moment. Um, and this, I think, is, is a demonstration of, of God talking to us through the Holy Scriptures and through our choices in what readings we, we look at. So pay particular attention to Psalm 27 and Luke 13 today as they are read out and hear the resonance with our um, situation in the world at the moment. Some of the liturgy this morning is coming from the Church of England's resources um, to pray for peace in the world. So I'd like to begin the, um, the service by just taking a few moments of silence to open ourselves to the Holy Spirit uh, to be with us and to be present with us in our worship this morning. So let us just be quiet for a few moments. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship together. And our first hymn this morning is Before the Throne of God Above. I hope. <laughs> I would offer to sing it, but I don't think that would be good for anyone.
Let us remain standing as we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Let us confess our sins, remembering before God the times when we have fallen from temptation into sin. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Savior, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed. Kindle, we pray, in the hearts of all, the true love of peace, and guide us with your pure and peaceable wisdom, those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward, till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit, or you are sitting, for the first reading. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. On whom then shall I be afraid? When, evil do when evildoers came upon me to eat up my flesh, it was they, my foes, and my adversaries who stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. And though war should rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing I have asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an, an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. 
Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, seek my face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will sustain me. Show me your way, O Lord. Lead me on the level path because of my enemies. <coughs> Deliver me not into the hands of my adversaries. For false witness has risen up against me. And also those who speak malice. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? O oh, tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our second hymn is Longing for Light. Please stand.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Just then, some Pharisees came up and said, Run for your life. Herod's got your number. He's out to kill you. Jesus said, Tell that fox I've no time for him right now. Today and tomorrow, I'm busy clearing out the demons and healing the sick. The third day, I'm wrapping things up. Besides, it's not proper for a prophet to come to a bad end outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killer of prophets, abusers of the messengers of God. How often I've longed to gather your children, gather your children like a hen, her brood safe under her wings. But you refused and turned away. And now it's too late. You won't see me again until the day you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. God, where are you? Have you ever found yourself asking that question? Ever wondered why it is that when really awful things are happening in the world, we never seem to see God spectacularly at work to make things better? No matter how hard we seem to pray, God doesn't seem to do anything. You ever felt like that? Well, I'll go on. If you'd all shook your heads, I would have left as a heretic. So my hunch is that for most of us, this is something that we've wrestled with at some point. And some of us might just find ourselves in that position now as we watch the unfolding developments in Ukraine. Needless loss of life, destruction of places, innocents caught in crossfire, mass outpourings of refugees. And that's before we even get to the politics and the bureaucracy. The list could go on, couldn't it? If you are able to watch the news and not find yourself moved to tears, God knows what will ever move us to that point. And the prayers of so many people have been poured into this situation, and yet it still seems to continue. Last week at St. Bridget's, the readings lent themselves very well to considering what God is doing at times like this. And again this week, as I read, particularly Psalm 27... I found myself having to look at it through the same lens. There is little else to do at this time, is there? I think it's a great reminder that the Psalms are not simply meaningless historical writings that have no relevance for today. I'm sure, like me, you will have seen many resonances in the words that Jeremy read as we heard it this morning. And so I want to start by looking at Psalm 27, and if you were to look at it, <clears throat> particularly in the, or certainly in the NRSV, I didn't look beyond that, if I'm honest with you. It's subtitled, A Triumphant Song of Confidence. And indeed it is, if you read the words. The Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Bold. 
And it is a real comfort as you continue on into the psalm, a real rallying call, <clears throat> until, of course, we turn to Ukraine. For it's pretty clear that there are people of God caught up in the middle of the conflict raging in the streets of Ukraine, or before this, we might think about those persecuted by Islamic State or other uh, militant groups. And that's before we even begin to think about those of us who live with ongoing persistent difficulties, whether those be physical, mental, or spiritual. Things that might, to us, feel like things that encamp around us or surround us. And I wonder if we're in one of those positions, whether we, whether those people, too, would find the same comfort in the words of this and other psalms. It seems like Psalm 27 was written as a result of David's recollections of God at work in his life. It wasn't written during the middle of a conflict in which he was literally facing an army surrounding him. And I think this is potentially quite a helpful understanding of, of where God is. See, often in the face of difficulties, it can be hard to see God at work. But when we look back, it begins to seem much more obvious. They say hindsight's a wonderful thing, don't they? But I think this is true. It's always harder to find God explicitly in the middle of difficulty. But when we look back, there are plenty of signs that he was there. <clears throat> Tracy and I were mulling this over a little bit. I'd like to say that we regularly have deeply profound conversations at home. She's not here. Uh, she may or may not watch this later. Um, we don't, <clears throat> funnily enough. But we were chewing the cud on Ukraine and about where God is in all of this. Because if you were look, to look back to the Old Testament, we have all sorts of wonderful stories of God causing vast armies to be defeated, don't we? So God can do it. So why isn't he? Well, I think, and I'm hoping to persuade you this morning, that God is most certainly at work in Ukraine and not in a passive sense. When we look back to those stories of the Old Testament, we hear of battles that almost seem to be over before they've started. And the Israelite army then advance on to the next thing and the next conquering. But in reality, many of those conflicts lasted for some time. It's hard to see that when we just read them in a chapter. And there was loss of life on both sides. We don't always see that, but it was true. The key is that the people of God were almost always outnumbered by those they faced, and yet they still overcame. And when you look at Ukraine, it's clear that there is an immense sense of faith to be found there. You may have seen the video where President Zelensky is talking and says, even if you destroy all of our Ukrainian cathedrals and churches, you will not destroy our faith. Our sincere belief in Ukraine and in God. Did you see him say that? They're powerful words. Oh, for more world leaders to be willing to stand up and talk about their faith in the same way. And there are all sorts of other examples of that sort of resilience to be found as well. There is something of a belief that the Ukrainian people are not simply fighting to defend their own country. For them, there is something much greater, almost a more divine purpose to what's happening. I think Marion and I talked about this this week as well, to what's going on. And they are outnumbered. And <clears throat> as yet, have not been defeated, even though day by day things are getting harder. And I wonder if we begin to see that in the context of what we see in the Old Testament, we begin to get a sense that God is at work. There's a particularly pertinent image that we may find helpful it's found in Exodus chapter 17, where Amalek attacks Israel. You'll know the story, even if you don't recognize the reference. While the battle is raging, Moses goes to the top of a hill, and he stands with the staff of God raised in his hand. And we're told that when the staff was held up, Israel prevailed. And as the staff drops, Amalek prevailed. So Aaron and Hur came up with a plan. They stood at the side of Moses, and when his hands got tired, they held up his hands to support him, so that as his hands were raised, Israel won the battle. In doing so, Israel prevailed. So many people, as I've said, are praying for Ukraine, and I think it's a little bit like that image. 
In praying, we are standing alongside the people affected by the war there. And I don't just mean the Ukrainian people. If you've read the news this morning, you will hear of innocents fleeing Russia and Belarus to escape the effects of the sanctions there too. There are many innocents caught up in this conflict. And as we pray, we are upholding them, like Aaron and Hur upheld Moses' arms. That's what I believe. And because many of us, like David, have seen answers to prayer, and that God is at work with the world, in the world, I think we too can pray with the same confidence that David speaks in Psalm 27. I wanted to reflect just briefly on one other aspect of our readings today that I also think is particularly pertinent. And it comes from Luke chapter 13, the lament over Jerusalem. It tells us, I think, something really important about the nature of God that we've been exploring already this morning, but also links into something that I was reading this week. That reading from Luke chapter 13 challenges our perception of God as we look at the way in which Jesus relates to the world. I think sometimes we find it easier to imagine the God out there somewhere who created the heavens of the, the earth, the all-seeing, all-knowing, the one who gives and takes away. But I wonder how we feel about the sense of a God who is present and active in the world today, who makes himself vulnerable to experience the same joys and pains and emotions that we do. Because I think that's the image that Luke chapter 13 paints for us, and not just Luke chapter 13. Entitled Jesus' Lament Over Jerusalem, it is not the only time that we see raw emotions from the Son of God himself. At the death of Lazarus, we're told that Jesus weeps. As he descends the Mount of Olives after the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, we are told that Jesus weeps. As he cleanses the temple from those abusing their position, he is angry. And those are just a few examples. We believe in a God who is vulnerable to the same emotions that we face. That's a harder image to picture, isn't it? If Jesus shows us what the Father is like, then I think that means we have to accept that God is capable of showing emotion too. There are things that upset him and break his heart. As we suffer, God suffers with us. As we celebrate, God revels in our joys. There is a worship song, in fact, there's a few of them I found. I was trying to find the right words for it, that contain the words, break our hearts with the things that break yours. But notice the order in which those things come. We worship a God with a broken heart. And if we can accept that to be true, then God doesn't suddenly feel so absent, distant, and uninterested. He's there traveling the tough road with us and with those facing persecution. And he is there as an actively responding companion on the way. And if this is true, then, as the book I was reading last week suggests, perhaps true omnipotence may not be found in some distant or separate power over something or someone, but rather in the intimate experience of being wounded for and with. And if those things are true, then it becomes clearer to see that God is present and God is active in Ukraine. And through our prayers, we are invited to stand alongside those suffering and to suffer with them. It felt right this morning, not simply to finish these words with an amen and move on to the statement of faith. There is a great deal going on in the world that I'm sure breaks our hearts too. And I wanted to give us a moment to simply reflect upon those and to see where God is. And so this morning, I want to finish with a song. It's a song of a, a hymn that we've sung before called Inspired by Love and Anger. It's a Celtic version of it, which I think is particularly poignant and beautiful. And I invite you just to sit. You might like to close your eyes. You might like to watch the words, but not sing. Simply to listen and to ask that question, God, where are you? Inspired by love and anger, disturbed by need and pain, informed of God's own bias, we ask.
asks who will go for me, who will extend my reach, and who, when few will listen, will prophesy and preach, and who, when few bid welcome, will offer all they know, and who, when few dare follow, will walk the road I show. Please stand as we say the creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? Believe and Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now Jane will come up to bring us our prayers of intercession. I could not ignore what is going on in Ukraine in these prayers, and a friend sent me this poem, which I think is very pertinent. I can't make the world peaceful. I can't stall tanks from roaring down roads. I can't prevent children from having to hide in bunkers. I can't convince the news to stop turning war into a video game. I can't silence the sound of bombs tearing neighborhoods apart. I can't turn a guided missile into a bouquet of flowers. I can't make a warmonger have an ounce of empathy. I can't convince ambassadors to quit playing truth or dare. I can't deflect a sniper's bullet from turning a wife into a widow. I can't stave off a country being reduced to ash and rubble. I can't do any of that. The only thing I can do is love the next person I encounter without any conditions or strings. To love my neighbor so fearlessly that it starts a ripple that stretches from one horizon to the next. I can't force peace on the world, but I can become a force of peace in the world. 
because sometimes all it takes is a single lit candle in the darkness to start a movement. Lord, make me a candle of comfort in this world. Let me burn with peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that you have placed in leadership in our church. I pray that they will continue to grow in wisdom and discernment as their ultimate desire is to seek your face. I pray for rest as being in leadership in a church can be spiritually demanding and exhausting. I lift up their families to you and thank you that you see each and every one of their needs and are faithful to meet them. I pray for a combination of growth and discipleship in each of their lives. In Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, in this season of Lent, we're reminded of our own difficulties and struggles. Sometimes the way has seemed too dark. Sometimes we feel like our lives have been marked by such grief and pain, we don't see how our circumstances can ever change. But in the midst of our weakness, we ask that you would be strong on our behalf, Lord. Rise up within us. Let your spirit shine out of every broken place we've walked through. Allow your power to be manifest through our own weakness so that others will recognize it is you who is at work on our behalf. We ask that you would trade the ashes of our lives for the beauty of your presence. Trade our mourning and grief for the oil of joy and gladness from your spirit. Trade our despair for hope and praise. We choose to give you thanks today and believe that this, is, this season of darkness will fade away. Thank you that you are with us in whatever we face and that you are greater than this trial. We know and recognize that you are sovereign. We thank you for the victory that is ours because of Jesus Christ. And we are confident that you have good still in store for our future. We thank you that you are at work right now trading our ashes for greater beauty. We praise you for... <coughs> making all things new. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, King of Kings, you say that the righteous man will live by faith. Mold me in your image and fill my heart with faith in you. Guide my actions so that I can live by faith and have a life in you abundantly and eternally. Cleanse my thoughts of impurities, dear God, Keep my eyes fixed on you and you alone. Help me be steadfast in my trust in you and your scriptures so that I can live right in your holy sight. Jesus, my saviour, you came down to earth to save me and told me to have faith in you. You said that with faith I can even say to the mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. My mind knows that if I believe, trust, and have faith in you, I will receive whatever I ask for in your holy name. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe that you are Lord. You are the God most high. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Erase my doubt, Jesus. Take it all away. Help my unbelief. I deliver myself into your righteous hands. Lord, in your mercy. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out 
and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. Amen. Please stand for the peace. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so from where we are, let us offer a sign of God's peace. Offertory hymn during which the collection will be brought forward is The Servant King. From heaven you came, helpless babe. Entered our world, your glory there, not to be served, but to serve, and give your life that we might be. This is our God, the servant. Calls us now to follow Him, to bring our life as a day.
each other's needs to prefer. We shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Living God, Father of light, hope of nations, friend of sinners, builder of the city that is to come, your love is made visible in Jesus Christ. You bring home the lost, restore the sinner, and give dignity to the despised. In the face of Jesus Christ, your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one a divided and broken humanity. With people from every race and nation, with the church of all the ages, with apostles, evangelists, and martyrs, we join the angels of heaven in their unending song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power 
be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We sit or kneel to pray as our Father has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And so draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This morning for our post-communion prayer, I'd like to invite you please to stand. And we're going to make this prayer to God on behalf of the world in which we live. You may like to picture a place or, a, or some people in your mind that you particularly think of as we pray this. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a waiting world, hope from Christ. Amen. As we stand, we sing our final hymn. Tell out my son, just to remind you there is no ministry.
May God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. And so let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs>